Well, there's a, a relatively new movement in the healthcare community to try and be net zero clinicians. And probably the best example of this is an article that's in the British Medical Journal. It's written by um, the main lead author is Jody Sherman out of the US, but there are two other doctors on the list as authors who are Canadian doctors. One calls herself the eco-doctor. Um, and uh, in it, they believe that it would be possible to cut medical healthcare emissions in half, global ones, by 2030. <laughs> and so healthcare emissions are about 5% of global emissions. So trying to do that by 2030 is totally absurd. And uh, there's a very good article in the LA Times by energy expert, Dr. Václav Smil, who's a Canadian, and he says that net zero goals are impossible and ridiculous. But these doctors think that they're possible. Um, now, you have to think of what that means for healthcare. It means that healthcare stops looking at you as a suffering individual who needs care, and they start looking at you as a carbon footprint. And in fact, there's what I think is a horrifying article in uh, an Oxford journal on geriatrics, which is called Geriatrics in the Time of Climate Change. And they assess the frailty carbon footprint of elderly patients as being very significant, a significant part of the national health system's carbon footprint. So it doesn't surprise me that during the COVID lockdowns, uh, it's reported that the uh, respiratory suppression drug midazolam was widely distributed and used in care facilities in um, the UK, and a lot of people died from it. It's, it is frightening um, when you look at how energy intensive a hospital is to transfer that over to completely unreliable green energy. What does that do to um, ventilators, dialysis, life support, and then add the war on plastic in there? And you've got a real recipe for disaster. Seems to me like they're trying to get to net zero patients survival rate. Well, that's partly the problem. I mean, uh, and again, you know, these are doctors who do not understand energy systems. So in that British Medical Journal article, I, I, I indicated uh, net zero healthcare, a call for clinician action. They suggest things like let's put solar panels on the roof of a hospital and battery power instead of using fossil fuel backup generators. Well, you know, the generators that are used at hospitals have to run the critical services of the hospitals for probably a week or two. And yes, they normally are either ge diesel generators or natural gas generators. But otherwise, all the people in the hospital will die. You know, electricity is the most important infrastructure service of medical services. And this was done, this was found in a study that was done in 2011, I think, in the UK. I mean, think of it, without electricity today, without high quality electricity that is stable, that doesn't have any dips or surges, that is uh, reliable and affordable, that's what makes modern medicine possible. That's an integral to hospital operations in every clinic, every diagnostic service. And yet, here are these health experts uh, suggesting that we should try and, you know, run a hospital on solar panels and batteries. Um, and in, in one of our recent videos, I did a comparison to a blog post that one of our professional engineers did where he was assessing solar realities in Alberta. And you'd have to have like a soccer pitch sized field for the Tesla battery uh, array to uh, back up, I think it was uh, a neighborhood of houses of probably about 12 houses. So think what you would need for a hospital. It would be, you know, an astronomical size and cost, and you'd have to replace it every 10 years. So, you know, you have people who really have no understanding of how the power grid works or how their hospital runs, making these very strident demands and recommendations. Um, and to continue my rant, sorry. No, go, <laughs> on please, that go. Note, 
you I think everyone should have a look at um, um, what's it called climate resilience in healthcare that was published by the O'Brien School at the U of C. Uh, this is uh, a very strident demand for immediate climate action and all these kinds of things that I just mentioned. And it was published in April of 2022. And one of the things that they suggest in there, which is also suggested in the UK, is that um, we should reduce our transportation for medical care. So they're suggesting that sick people could take public transport or, or medical workers could ride a bike to work and maybe, maybe that bike could be co-financed by the government. <laughs> I mean, imagine you're on a ward, you walked miles on that ward that day, you dealt with life and death situations, blood, tears, happiness, uh, grief, and then they're asking you to ride your bike home. Now, if you live a block away, okay, you know, but most people don't, and, and it's winter here. And if you're a sick person, do you really want to take public transit? Right. I mean, it's... You know, these ideas are so ludicrous, so misplaced, and so focused on the carbon footprint. They forget that their whole purpose is actually treating patients, people, human beings, and being a human being with that human being. It's sick. It's really psycho. Oh, hey, what you just saw there is a clip from my weekly full-length show, The Gun Show. It airs on Wednesday, but this is the internet. You can watch it whenever you feel like. You just have to become a subscriber to our paywalled premium content. Just go to rebelnewsplus.com to become a member today.